it, it, it's it's nuts. I mean, I understand it. And basically, what I what I was saying before is, uh, um, uh, you know, I I've actually been out on like the Berlin Turnpike before, two days before a holiday, and people are probably coming home from work late, and they've had a checkpoint out. Well, it's real bad over there. I work in Cromwell, so I know it's pretty bad over there. Uh, the cops are very uh, very aggressive uh, over there. Um, but again, there's also you got like the uh, the highways are there too, so they got that that flow of traffic that's going north and south. You know, various plates over there. So like I don't know, like on 91 over there. I don't know what part of the Berlin Turnpike are you talking? About? Uh, where are you? What, which part of Connecticut are you in? I was actually coming from Meriden, heading oh, Meriden. to Hartford. Oh, okay, yeah, exactly. Up was, 91. It was the first half. It was the first half, so it was probably yeah. uh, what is that, Newington? Yeah, um, right. Uh, it, it was seven o'clock at night. I'm telling you. Oh yeah. It, it was, you know, oh yeah. Oh, and yeah. I was wondering, like, what are they doing? I don't. I don't care if it's a seatbelt check. Like, they're causing a big fuss. I have a big and, problem uh, with, with those stops when they have those checkpoints. They actually net here in Connecticut. We're lucky, and it's not as bad as some states because I do a lot of research on this. Where they, they 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 just you just don't know if they have checkpoints. They actually will in Connecticut. They'll say we are setting up checkpoints, and they'll actually announce it on the news. For various well, reasons. That's the law. Have to. <laughs> well, but, uh, no, no, they, they don't. They, they have to. I don't. I don't know. Is that is that what they have to do? Do they have to literally tell us here? I don't know. I mean, actually, when I when I went to driver's retraining a few years back, oh, uh, good. I was told okay. it, it was a real cool. It was a real cool guy. It was this guy? He was actually he, he worked in the fire department, and so he he decided to inform us. He actually said, "Look, I know you all know how to drive, so I'm just going to give you a bunch of information you can use." He said, uh, first of all, checkpoints aren't legitimate unless they announce it." Uh, uh and there also has to be a way for you to turn once you see the checkpoint. So you have to be able to see the checkpoint <laughs> and be able to turn. It's, That's it, they set actually it up in pretty an area cool. Where there, where you cannot turn, it's actually not legitimate. Wow, I actually am impressed. You know, our state's very strange. You know, half of it's got a lot of liberty, and the other half of it's got a lot of tyranny. Uh, I don't mean in like any geographical location either. I'm just saying the the legal system is bizarre. You know. Um, it, it's weird. It's backwards. There's it's very weird, goals, right? At the same time, it's it's going along with the system. So. It definitely goes along. Oh my God, the prison system, especially. Uh, it's it's uh, it's very odd. You know, they target they target these um, you know the people that are that that are the most that can be most harmed. You know, people that might be a hey, look. Let's face it. Uh, I'm not I'm not no bleeding heart liberal, but at the same time I'm not a cold heartless you know elitist that wants to like destroy humanity. So you know people that don't have as much money tend to smoke more, they tend to like hang out in bars, they tend to you know like drown their misery so to speak. You know, they tend to right. live on the lower end of society that we quote unquote call the lower end of society or whatever, right? And you want to call them white trash, you want to call them whatever you want to call them, I don't know, or or in any, you know, it doesn't have to be white, obviously. I hate that label thing. I'm a totally anti-label things and racism divides us. It's crazy. Anybody, low-income people tend to chill in bars and hang out, and that's like their release because they work so hard, maybe two jobs to try to make ends meet. And... They're the ones that are just, you know, they just, you know, leave me alone. Then they, you know, they're the ones that they target. I, I gotta tell you, I mean, if you, if you're a middle class person, you know, honestly, unless you're driving home on the highway, in town, they, they, they target these, the, the bars, at least in my town, and you could see where they, the cops are going. They go to the, to the, to the lower, lower income areas. Now, yeah, there's drugs there and everything, but not all those areas have drugs. But they go to certain areas. So it's definitely um, like, a, like a business, like they know where their business is, you know what I mean? Like if, I, I come from a sales background, so if you know where your market is, you know, in other words, you know, hey listen, they're going to buy over here, so I'm going to go work over here, as opposed to they, right. don't, they don't buy as much over here, you know, as far as whatever you're selling, right? So anyhow, so they're probably looking at it from the same point of view. Well, listen, this is where all the drug activity is, this is so... Just because these low and these low-income people just happen to work there, there, there is obviously you know drug activity in in the area, but it, there's always just seems to be police there, like you know asking questions and you know and having and hassling with the regular people that live there, you know. And I know they're trying to, and I and I really dig the force 
they are trying to make, you know, ties to the community by like getting to know who they are, you know, like the people. But right. but the people are like afraid of them. And I'll give you a good example. I, I um, a couple of nights ago. Oh, in fact, I got to put a call out to. Hey, listen, this is out to my friend Jacques Williams, founder of the Singer Songwriter Network in Torrington, Connecticut. Hope you're feeling better, man. I know you had some surgery. I haven't got a chance to speak to you. You're uh, recuperating there at Charlotte Hungerford Hospital. I don't know if you have the ability to hear me uh, through your laptop or something, but um, I'm, I'm praying for you, brother, and I hope you're feeling better. I will make my way up there tomorrow. I figured I'd give you a day to rest. Anyhow, back to that. And he's a great guy and uh, a part of the Torrington uh, Arts and Culture Committee as well uh, and founder of the Singer-Songwriter Network in Torrington. Um, but the the police are trying like they we, we Jock and I were were doing a, a little thing he does a, he's a doing karaoke for a, um, a a bar on the south side called uh, I think it's called the South Side Inn actually and um, the police were just coming in and hassling a couple of people that were in there in and out and uh, ended up like. Um, they weren't doing anything. I just they just were hassling these people because, I, I I mean I didn't get the whole gist of it, but it was like, they were just there hanging out and they're saying, well how long are you going to be there and what are you doing and when are you when are you? and they asked me this when I when I was like outside I said well I'm still playing here and um, here with my friend Jacques who does the karaoke and I played my guitar along with the karaoke. They they had a good time. It was fun. Got a couple of free beers. It was nice. Um, and. They were like asking all these questions, so it was like, you know, come on, like, what do you, what's it look like I'm doing? You know, they're looking for, they're looking for the problem, and let it, instead of, you know, uh, and, you, you know, they're looking to find something, man. And and I know it's like it, it, it's just not supposed to be done that way. I mean, Serpico, right? Serpico, who, who else could you go look to as being one of the, one of the most stand-up cops you could ever have? You should hear what he has to say about the police state going on. Uh, he was on Alex Jones's show. It was unreal. Uh, I've posted that. Um, it's it's, it's a, a favorited on my uh, YouTube on the on the We Are Change Connecticut YouTube page, and it's just unbelievable. He's just totally it's ridiculous. Yeah, you know where the drugs are. So what do you do? You sit out there. You don't like you don't hop on these guys and and, and try to try to find the problem or try to you know try to create a problem. He says it. They try to create problems. They try to create problems. That, 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 problem, that's reaction, problem. solution, you know? <laughs> well, that's the problem. When they try to stir up the problem, that's that what they're, they're going to solve in the first place. Exactly. That, that, that's an issue. That, you know, that was no what was happening. And they, and they actually did. This guy ended up, they ended up hassling this guy. And, um, I, you know, I, I, they either kicked him out or he took him away. I don't know. I, didn't, I, I was very uncomfortable about it. I really was. And, you know, what was funny about it is because it's like, you know, well, what if I had a few drinks, and what if I, you know, like, you know, then they're going to follow me home and, you know, to my driveway and then uh, uh, give me a ticket or arrest me like they did to uh, to this person that I'm talking about? Dude, this story is unbelievable. I, I don't want to really break it yet because it's not, it's not right, righteous, it's not, it's not finished yet. But imagine that you call the cops, right, and then you get arrested in your own driveway because they assume, assume that you drove home and you're drunk because you're drunk when they got there and the only way you could have got there is that you were that you that you drove drunk and that's actually causing this person a lot of trouble can you believe that so they didn't catch him yep. but they illegal. assumed they didn't catch yeah it's like it's like guilt by guilty by association or guilty by by uh, insinuation <laughs> welcome to america Right, Wait for pre-crime. Wait for pre-crime. Oh, it's pre-crime. Oh, it's it's. What do you mean? Wait for pre-crime? We're already there, Nat. Come on. Is aren't we sort of talking a little bit about pre-crime here? Isn't it? Isn't that what I mean, that is? Uh, well, you know? it, you're talking about entrapment and it's well, yeah. but uh, you know. Yeah. I mean, real pre, real true pre-crime. I know, uh, man. A movie I forgot. Yeah, uh, the minor, the Minority Report. Yeah, but it's, it's worse than no, that. They have just, you ever seen? Yeah. Have you ever seen the movie? It's got Christian Bale in it. He plays the lead role, and I forgot what the movie's called, but it has a lot of Matrix-type action in it. Um, but no one is allowed to have emotions. You have to take these pills. 
to uh, in order not to have emotions. I don't remember and, that. Uh, it's almost set up like a 1984 type film. It's actually fantastic. And of course, there's an underground movement of people who don't follow this. They live outside the, uh, the, the heavy populated yeah. city, and they, they yeah. there's an underground movement, and uh, they have emotions. And uh, this person actually is like a really really high up cop, and he ends up finding out after they kill his wife for having emotions that ever since then his kids stopped taking the, the medication and uh, he stops it ends up stop taking it and uh, ends up fighting for the good people in the end but it was a it was a weird film that kind of is somewhat revealing of, of, of the future in the sense that you know basically if you're emotional you're gonna be a problem and uh, I think it's weird uh, how they they target that at production when production is actually what's under attack today in America. I mean, they talk about job creation, and the only jobs they're creating are, are you know, your military and police forces. Those don't produce food. Those don't manufacture goods. They do the world no good. I know. You know? Um, Absolutely. And, you know, like I said, I don't have a problem with law enforcement and military. Right. But when, when it becomes overwhelming, when it, when you're building up forces, you got to say, what are you mobilizing for? You know, and if you're mobilizing against the American people, that's a huge issue. Yeah, well, yeah. that's what they're doing. It's so obvious, and anybody's like, "You're crazy." I don't. Well, there was LRADs going last night, Nat. LRADs to scatter the people. LRADs in Hartford, Connecticut, on record, on videotape. LRADs. That 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 was it. Really, even necessary? That's crazy. No, they want to beta test it. They, you know, let's see how it works. <laughs> Come on, they got these toys. Let's use them. Think about it, man. <laughs> Holy shit. Oh, my uh, God. It makes me like, I mean, I'm not laughing, people. Money, yeah. I'm not laughing. Oh, where do they get the money? The federal government gave them Homeland Security money. Oh, my God. Reichstag Security. Our Reichsland. Money. They, yes. They, you know, they say, oh, everyone's going poor. But where do they get the money for all this oh, stuff? I mean, it, I, I live in Wallingford. The, the police have doubled in the past 10 years. Yeah. Why? The population didn't go up. Uh, your crime rate didn't go up either. I have news for you. 